Are you joining us? Oh, no, we got. Cool. Three, six, nine, eight. Yeah. Lovely. Welcome, guys. So, welcome. My name is Sand. Naya. Um, and what we want to do is actually zoom in on hopefully giving you a little bit more detail on how do you design to ho a, a, a hosting and harvesting process really, really well. Okay, so that's, we kind of want to bridge, you'll see that there's all these papers, we want to help you figure out how do you design to bridge this gap between your purpose of your session and your end goal of your harvest, so the kind of the outcomes. So it's really about how do we create a good design that fits from here to here. Okay, so that's, that's somewhere where we'll take you. Um, and the assumption of what we're going to take you through, um, which is really critical, is that we're going to zoom in on one session or one methodology. Um, inside a bigger picture of a process that you're running. So we're assuming, for example, that you already have a team together that you're working with, okay? So if you, if you didn't have that before you came, then you would need to find a team. Uh, you already have a group of participants who are there to participate, and you know who they are. Um, you already have a call and an invitation, so the participants have a reason for being in the room with you, okay? And you already have a space to work in, and you already have a set time frame. So in this context, you have a team of three people. You have, just like we do here, you have 112 participants to work with. Um, you're in the context you're in as an art of hosting and harvesting training. So that's why people are, are here and with you in the room. Uh, you have two hours and you're in the lovely rotunda. So what we're going to do now is we're going to first deconstruct the World Cafe that you went through so that you have a sense of how the design process worked and what we did as a team to, to design the session you guys actually went through when you first arrived. Okay? So the, the first piece is to understand the, uh, the context that your session is inside. So if you think about when you first arrived, when the World Cafe came in, you had already just checked in. So people have just arrived from all over the place. I think we have 33 different countries, lots of different people who don't know each other. They've just arrived in to go through this three-day training together. And so the first thing that we want to do after they've checked in is to help them again arrive and land a little bit more. So in terms of purpose, we want people to help, help people arrive and land. We want people to be able to connect to the call together. So there was a calling question for this training. And beyond just simply saying, this is my name and this is why I'm here, we want specifically to dig a little bit deeper into that call. And we want to model a method because it's a training situation, so we're wanting to model a method. So when we were designing the Royal Cafe, these are things that we were thinking about up front. This is what we want to be building in the design. So, that goes there on purpose. And then the other critical piece, for all you MSLSers, is that you go from the front end of the process, then right down into the harvest which is down here. So we often talk about backcasting from something. So if you think about that breath pattern, the purpose is what we're opening up, but the harvest is what we want to converge towards. And if you want to design well, you need to have thought about where you want to go, not just what you want to open up, okay? So if you want to come down here so you can see this sheet. Um, so when we talk about harvest, um, there are, we, we look at this kind of quadrant model. And so we can break harvesting down into kind of four boxes. And the first kind of columns are tangible harvest, which is stuff that you can touch, like this. This is all tangible pieces of harvest. And then this intangible harvest, which is things that you can't touch. That's people's learning, people's experience, the relationships that people make with each other. Those are things that we can't touch. And we can't also necessarily always control the intangible harvest. I can put you two in a room and ask you some questions and hope that you become friends, but I can't make you become friends, right? Whereas I can take a photo of you in the same room. Does that make sense? So I can... Give you a hug. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense though? So you can't always control the intangible harvest, but you can create conditions that make it possible. Okay? This is also often where we want to, in these types of processes, like art of hosting, we want to think about this often first as well. So often when we're talking about harvesting, we get locked into only thinking about what's the page going to look like, or what's the document going to look like at the end, but that's not actually that important. What's really important is the, the relationships and connections and uh, direction that people take together. 
So you can also break it down to, in, to individual and collective. So what do we want each person to walk away with? And what do we want the collective to experience together? Which builds this pot, these four quadrants. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah? Cool. So when we're designing this process, we want people to arrive, we want people to be able to talk about the call, and we want people to be able to experience a method. On the individual level, what's critical for our harvest and designing our process is that the participants have the chance to express and make sense of their connection to the call. So the method that we design and that we use, we want to make sure that everybody in the room has the opportunity to be able to speak during that method. Does that make sense? Which brings everyone's voice into the room, it helps everyone be heard, and it helps everyone begin to understand, oh, why are you here? And also for me to share why am I here. Does that make sense? Because as a training, we also wanted everybody to be able to experience the method itself. So we want everyone to walk away with an experience of what happened. And then on the collective level of the intangible side, we want to begin to create a shared intention for the learning um, together. So if you think about the very beginning of the training, everyone's arrived for a different purpose, a different reason. And the very beginning, we want to find that thing that's in the middle of all of us that we can use as an anchor to use throughout the training of why are we all here? Not just why are you here, but why are we all here together? So that's the collective piece. And we also want to begin to weave relationships because no one knows each other or they've come with a group of people that they do know, but there's loads of people that they don't. So we want to begin to connect people to people that they don't know. So we want to pick up a method and design a process that helps engage that. Yeah. What's the first point again? Which one? Here or here? No, there. Yeah, the to create, so in this context, because it's the very beginning of a training and we're here to learn together, yeah. we want to create a shared intention for our learning. So a shared reason for why, what we're trying to learn together. Okay. And that'll become clearer once we walk you through the rest of the process. Okay? So we've now gone from beginning to end and now we're going to go back to it again. Um, to the beginning. So as a, as a design team then, the next thing you want to figure out is these two things together. So what is the question, the key question that we're working with? And what's the method that's going to underpin it? So this is kind of why are we doing it? This is what are we trying to get to? And then this is how are we going to do it? Okay? So, um, in this case, we chose the method World Cafe. Um, if you think about the context that we're in, people have just arrived, why do you think that we picked World Cafe? to be the next step of the process to help people begin to meet each other yeah. and move in that direction that we just talked about. Well, being kind of conscious of that people might not feel comfortable with speaking to the whole group of yep. individuals. Exactly. Kind of meeting smaller groups. So, and World Cafe, because it's at tables, you're at clusters of a much smaller group of people, which you're still in the collective, but you're a smaller, which allows people to speak a bit more clearly about why they're there. Yeah. So if you're usually mixing people up, like they don't do the whatever two hours with uh, three people, but maybe two times three or two times eight people. Exactly. So there's a capacity to rotate people, so we know that we can mix people up with new people that they haven't seen before. Yeah. And then the other thing that's actually critical is time. So if you yeah. imagine that if we all sat in a big circle and passed the talking piece around with 112 people all saying, what's your connection to the call? It's like death by circle, mm -hmm. right? So there's also something about knowing we only have this amount of time, this is, and we want to keep the energy lively, people have just arrived, and we want to keep things moving. So World Cafe is also good for that. It's also uh, offer uh, a minimum structure that people go through. If it's, a, it's a, something that is too open at the beginning, they might get a bit scared and a little bit lost. If there's an open space right, on, right in front, maybe they will land in a different way. So this gives the yeah. minimum structure they need. Particularly if you've never done something like this before, if you've never worked this way before, going straight into it's so open, it's like, uh, okay. Yeah, we could have done small circles. There's a whole bunch of things that we could have. There's different ways you can interpret it. We'll stick with this because we don't have huge amounts of time, but we can. We're going to take some questions at the end, so we can come back to that. So in terms of the question that we were working with, this is the other important thing to be able to design properly. Is we know our methods, we know why we're doing it, but the question that we're working with is what, this is the inquiry, is what is the relevance of the calling question to us collectively? So not just to you individually, which is why you all came, but what is the, why is it relevant to us all? Does that make sense? So that's gonna underpin our design. And then, we're gonna go down the end of the day, um, so that you can see that we're, we're pinging back and forth between designing on this end and then figuring out what we're trying to do.
So now that we know that we're going to use World Cafe, um, and we know what our question is, we can also think about what's one of the tangible pieces of harvest we want to offer to everybody, so something that they actually can touch that's going to come out of it at the end. And this is to serve as a reminder, there's that, so tangible harvest is often about memory, it's about helping people remember what they talked about and reflect on it. This is why we put all this stuff up on the wall, so you remember, oh yeah, day one we did that. Okay. So if you remember from what you actually, you guys actually did, we basically created and maybe post-it notes at your tables, and then we clustered those post-it notes and we made a big poster at the very end, which we'll roll out again again. And what we were looking for is what are the shared questions from everybody that could guide the training. Because the next breath that we were going into is a whole bunch of other methodologies, and as a, as a, as a training team, we want to be able to work with the questions that are actually in the participant group, not just what we think you should all be learning. So we wanted to surface some of what's alive in the group so that we can work with it for the next couple of days. Does that make sense? Cool. So now we're not at the point where we can actually design our method. So we're not into the kind of the, the actual design of the process and much more of the detail of who, what, where, when, how, all of that kind of stuff. Okay? The key thing is that we tend to dive into this before we've got clear here and here. And particularly, we tend to dive into it before we've got clear here and here as a team. So you might be clear, but if you're working with a bunch of other people, you need to make sure that they are also clear so you can actually work well together. Sometimes there's moments you're like, what are you doing? That's not what I thought we were going to do. Why are you asking that question? <laughs> All of those things. So if you do this very well, it means you can do very well. So remember the breath pattern? Every session that you design, no matter what it is, whether it's open space, wall cafe, design for wider action, always has a frame at the beginning, so introducing the participants to the method, and it always has a close at the end. So closing down the process, recapping what we've done and what we're going to do next. So any session you design should always have those bookends at either end. Um, okay, so now, you reflect back on the actual world cafe that you did. Can any of you, so there was round one. So remember we did, which we'll, we'll pull them out, but we did three rounds. Can any of you remember the question that we asked you in the first round? There's three questions. Yep, don't worry. I don't remember exactly what the calling question. Yeah, exactly, okay. So, the, the, right, well, so the question we asked in the first round of World Cafe is what do the calling questions mean to me and my life? Okay? So we're wanting to invite people into a personal reflection first, so again anchoring them into why am I here sharing with you about what, what these calling questions mean to me and my life. We're also bringing in a little bit of context there because we're asking about your life. So you get to share a little bit of where you're from, all of those, that, what's the relevance of why, what the situation I'm coming from, but I'm, I'm here. So we're deepening that in the field. And so we're, the other thing that we do on a tangible level is we end up with loads of, we give people some paper and pens at their tables to capture some of that conversation. And we call this raw data. Were any of you at this table that was this sheet? No? Yes. You were, okay, cool. For the rest of you, does it make any that much sense to you what's on there right now? Particularly if you look at it quickly, can you tell what the conversation was about? No. no. Okay, and that's fine. But when you look at look at it, does it mean stuff to you? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you've got to remember that if this is one table, this is meaningful to everybody at that table, but to no one else in the room. Okay? So the next thing we want to do, if you remember, what did after round one, what happened? Um, you switched places, so you were rotated to meet some new people, okay? And then we had a second round. Hmm. Does anyone remember the question in the second round? Uh, I think it was what themes emerged. Yeah, bang. Okay, so the next, the next question was we're moving from individual to collective. And we're saying, what are the themes and patterns that emerged in the stories that were shared? So everyone shared a story here, and then we're looking to surface the themes and patterns. So we're moving from, we're now looking for what's in the middle of all of us, not just what's your story. And this is very intentionally about sense making. So we're not adding necessarily new data to one sheet, we're making sense of what was already there. 
that makes sense? Okay. And so we end up with more broad edit because we're still working with these sheets, but people are also adding to these sheets to begin to make sense of the patterns that they've seen. Okay. So we're taking people into that zone, and then we move into round three. Does anyone remember the question for round three? It links. I'll give you a clue. It links to that. <laughs> Wasn't it the bingo? Hush. No, the first question, so I'll, I'll have to put it on the... So, we were looking for what are the common questions that come out of the themes. And for that, you stayed at the same table. Okay? So we then surface themes, but themes aren't so helpful to work with as questions. These questions are things we can unpack and unfold. Okay? And from that, so this is another sense-making session. So it's again, make, we're going from generating raw data, and then we're making sense of our stories, and then we're making sense of the themes and looking for questions. And out of that, if you remember, you were given three post-it notes. So we're now going to tangible harvest. We're converging. This is, if you imagine the breath pattern, this is opening up some emergence, what's emerging in the field, and now we're converging towards questions. Does that make sense? So if you imagine that breath pattern, we're And each table was asked for three post-it notes for the questions. Remember that? Yes. Yes. Cool. Then what happened? Once you had your three post-it notes at your table. Bingo. Bingo. So what we now need to do is go from the tables to the whole and make sense of everything at the whole. Would it ha if we could have just said, okay, we'll collect your post-it notes and we'll take those for you. Um, if we had done that, um, would that have given us as a harvest team a lot of work to do? Or not very much work to do. <laughs> to find patterns in the questions. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Really? So when you have so many people, you want to leverage the collective intelligence in the room, yes. also to build ownership of surfacing the patterns using the people that are there, not with the harvesters, because you can project all your own shit onto it, right? So you want to let the participants tell you what are the connections in the room, okay? Because they're the ones, that's the critical thing. They're the ones who know the detail. If you imagine these as like pixels in a photo, these are really big pixels. Okay, so you don't know the detail that sits under them, and you have a danger of misinterpreting what the connections are. Whereas if you let people know the detail and make the patterns, they're, they're basing it off a lot more intelligence than you can, particularly if you have no idea what those conversations were, to make sense of them. Yeah. Okay, so this is then sense making and final tangible piece of harvest, which was, where is it? <laughs> so if you think about what we did, what we were designing for here, we ended up with. Ta -da! Okay? So these are all the clusters that came out of the bingo, which we then identified a question for, a high level question for. And very intentionally, we kept both the high level question and all of the post it notes. <laughs> what was my question, but we're all, what were also the other questions that were in there? And then as a design team for our next breath of our next map, if we can use these questions to help us design what we do next. Uh, yeah. Final layer, always, always, particularly with tangible pieces of harvest, is you have to share it. And that's why we put all this stuff up on the wall, is that you'll watch during Fika, people will go, oh, that connects to this. And you're flipping people from a creative process where they're generating content into a reflective process where they're digesting it. The risk with all these experiences is it's like it's like a buffet of food and you're like, mmm, this tastes so good. Mm, but you never digest the food, you just keep putting more and more stuff in your mouth. Um, so part of the harvesting process is can I flip people from a creative space into a reflective space so I can integrate what I learn. So keep the memory of what happened. Yeah. We're also gonna put that on the website. So maybe in six months you're you're facilitating something and we wanna remember the process and what happened. This can help you reconnect to it. So keep the memory of it. Yeah. So for taking action. Many times you can only take action through that. If you don't have that, you have no idea what to do. So we're gonna take some questions now. The critical piece I guess of teaching that we're trying to give here is that your harvest informs your hosting massively. So when you're designing to host, your harvest is what's informing the way you design it and the way you build it together. Um, and what we can often do is that we can create huge amounts of time, because you'll notice here we have basically two thirds sense making, so harvesting with the group, and only one third of generating actual content. 
often we do huge amounts of generating content, and we don't make any time for sense making, and we try and do it so fast so that people don't actually have time to work through it. So one thing we would say is make sure you build in time if you're designing your hosting, to make sure that you allow people to make sense of, of the conversations that they're having. You probably are feeling that a little bit this weekend. We keep jumping from method to method to method to method, and it's like, ah! <laughs> so much. Okay, so we can... Sometimes something that can help you slow down the process of sense making and help people see things more clearly. You can, on WordCup many times, you can do the same question three times. Mm -hmm. And you can really make sense of it, and really distill, distill, until you get a really powerful outcome. So you can use it in that way. So. Do you know what we could do? Is what if rather than actually do a design job, what if we put out one of the other scenarios and watch it through how we would what we might do? Yeah. Okay, that's right. Because uh, we had planned to give you some scenarios to make your own design, mm -hmm. and but we're not going to have time to really do it. But I think it can be helpful for you to see another another situation where this could happen here, right? Uh, so for example. Imagine the, the blue organization invites you for a, a process that they have in total three hours, yeah, five minutes. Uh, but they want you to put one, uh, two hours, they're gonna do the first half an hour of welcome and checking and the checkout, you have, they, they want two hours. And yeah, they want all the group of 30 people in a big space like the Refinement, to have fresh ideas to work on and to do a collective uh, brainstorming. That's the purpose that they have. Okay. So they really want to diverge completely. They really want to just go crazy with ideas and then maybe harvest something that they can really use in the future. Not right now. Remember, you go all the way there to the intangible side. <laughs> So, <laughs> what they want to, as an intangible outcome, that they can sense that they're working for some good cause. So they want to have ideas that are going to make the people feel that, oh, you're doing something good through this company, and they're beginning to co-create uh, many, many ideas, all right? And then, together with the client, uh, he's going to maybe give you, okay, the, the rough question that I have is that, how can our company contribute for a better world? Then you go back. You don't know the method, you don't know anything yet. <laughs> so, we have, they give you two hours, and you know that they want to have that intangible outcome, and that they want to figure out how they can contribute for a better world. So, all right. So what do you want really tangibly? What does it really mean? And then by talking and then by thinking, when you're designing, okay, so the harvest that I really want might be some really concrete ideas. Many concrete ideas. Maybe, I don't know, build a, a new cafe in the company only with organic uh, coffee, whatever. So, and have as many ideas as possible that are really sustainable. Many concrete ideas that can be further developed in the future. So now that's very clear. So you know that what you want is a set of ideas that maybe you're going to cluster to, me to help make sense of that, but you really want very concrete, specific ideas. Right? So, and then, now that you want, so what's the method that might inform that uh, help you? Have two hours. So, for example, to make it simple, you could use work ahead. It's also a really good process for kind of a brainstorming and re-diverge and have many co-created ideas. So we decide to do a, a work of it, and you can think of a, and then the, the next step would be, okay, so how do we design the, the question of each one of those steps that is gonna help you then think maybe, so what is really a good contribution to the world, or how this, con this company can contribute for a better world, or which ideas can, really take us there. So maybe you could build a, a process like that, and then in the end, you could be, get, get to those nuggets, those concrete ideas, and maybe you could do something like a bingo to help people to cluster those ideas. Oh, this is ideas that are uh, a service you're gonna create, or oh, those ideas are uh, a new product, and then you could cluster that, and then 
at the end of those two hours, they could look at that, those clusters, and maybe each department could guess, oh, I want to get those ideas and put them into practice. So it's a, it's a very different way of using the, the same way of thinking and the same methodology as well. Is it clear? So we just wanted to give you this perspective uh, and have two minutes for questions. <laughs> Uh, I get the feeling there's another thing I've noticed in the pattern before. When, uh, so basically, it starts with the individual, you have to ask the person to feel safe. And for, ever, for every broad data that the assessment cycle, more and more you can people also do will start like to speak up because it's the individual's creative question like that has the other purpose of doing like a work to say or whatever. So to make the as many individuals as possible. So it's it, all of these participants are active. So we're One looking to engage like this 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 So in that sense, I'm just wondering if it's some intentional, like some intentional thought, or if it's just this side effect of it. No, it's, it's an intentional thought. So otherwise, you could say, well, the method that we're going to pick is uh, some other. So all of the methods that we're using are participant for their way of writing and engagement. So we've already decided that that's an important thing to engage, right down to the column. So that's already. Otherwise, we would just choose. There's lots of other processes that don't draw people together in quite the same way. It's more come and comment on the ideas that I have, and I don't care what. <laughs> I'm wondering if this process is documented in a book or a This? Just designed it. <laughs> so we've just, this is one of the emerging pieces of this training, is that we were trying to, we've actually just been like, okay, let's make this really clear. So if you think that that's useful, we will document it. Um, so thank you. Good, so that's one of the next steps. So this will be on the website that we put together for you guys. I have a question. Um, do you bounce between the purpose and then the intangible, and then you go back to the uh, question and method, and then to the tangible? I I think because I think if you get focused, this becomes much more about outcome. So the, this is because it's so tangible, you can end up getting too consumed by where it's going to go, if that makes sense. So if you start here, um, you're more about what am I trying to cultivate versus where am I actually trying to direct people. So often people will say, I want a strategic report, and that's where they start, versus this is sort of where we want people to end up, this is their purpose, and therefore this is the documentation that would be helpful. Whereas if you decide to do the report first, then you start building everything else to fit the report and not to fit where you want the people to end up. So I tend to do it the other way. Yeah. Because many, many times, if you're looking for a client, you don't have any idea of the tangible things. And so many times, it's, it's very helpful just to zoom out and, and help them see that there's actually you're not looking for the report. You give the real purpose and the real outcome that you want. It might be the, the, the team building that you need to do. It might be the, the, the collaboration across uh, departments. I just want to give you some feedback. I thought it was very clear. It really, I think if this is kind of connecting to if it's about somebody, a company, or uh, and, and the way they work, or want to change things, then make sure to include them. Mm -hmm. I think this was really like, yeah, it was kindergarten. Yeah, it was kindergarten. Yeah, it was really useful for that. Like, still, still, still is. Yeah. I noticed some of the um, uh, squares there were well, left blank. Yeah. Um, if they are optional. Yes. So you, so you could try to fill all the. No. So only, only if it makes sense. Or people will fill this on their own up, and so you're all taking your own notes. Yeah. So that's intangible individual stuff. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily matter what those are. Sometimes you want people to share stuff with the company. But because it's a participatory process, we are often working down here. This is, for me, it's these sections are often important. Yeah. For example, during the training, this is also like the workbook that we could do all individually as well. So this, there are things you can put, put in this bucket. Um, um, just try to simplify now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 it's not 
The critical thing in the design process is to make it it's an active choice of whether you're going to build that square or whether you're not. So that's for me, this is just a thinking tool to help you think through all the aspects and then decide. Yes, sometimes you don't need any kind of adjustment. Like sometimes you don't need any documentation. It's just that. But you just make a choice of saying, as a team, we don't need that or we do need it, and this is what it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, so there's a dance. So this is, for, we got asked this question again. For me, this is, purpose is both, is more focused on why you're doing something, harvest is on what you're trying to get towards. And normally, they can actually nearly be the same language, but purpose is phrased as the purpose is to do this. The harvest is we will have goals. If that makes sense, goals. So uh, it's not a good, not quite a goal. Um, anyway, we're done. <laughs>